Welcome to another episode of Mr. J's Workshop here at the Bernie Stage Airport in Bernie, Texas, home of Texas Precision Engraving. Uh, time is just flying. Uh, Sun and Fun came and went, wasn't able to make it. Maybe next year, take the 701 out. Uh, the Zenith Rudder Workshop came here to Bernie, Texas. What a great time. I mean, met a lot of people, made a lot of connections, learned a lot. And I'm looking forward to the next rudder workshop here in Texas. Uh, well, life has happened, you know, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is uh, I, I've been getting a lot of work related to the Zenith world and other aircraft worlds out there in, reg in regards to placards, overlays, and data plate. Uh, I'm very happy for that. I even made some connection out there with uh, uh, some... YouTubers out there, uh, Joe's RC Corner, Mark, Kit Plane Enthusiast, uh, all of you, uh, thank you for your support. Um, but let's let's do an update over here. Uh, Mark, my partner uh, on the 701, he's behind the scenes. He's actually behind the scenes. Uh, life hit him too, so he wasn't able to do anything either, so... Uh, we're back in the saddle now. Uh, let me show you what we got done so far and, uh, we'll see where it goes. Alrighty. So what we got done inside the cockpit is, uh, we got the back, back seat pan, uh, back seat backs, rivet in place. All the Clecos are out. Uh, the baggage compartment's all riveted, uh, now the seat pans, I just did something a little bit different here. Instead of riveting the seat, uh, seat pans in, I, I rib nut them so they're threaded now. So I'm able to access underneath the seats by taking the screws out and I could get to my electrical, uh, electrical wires, fuel lines, cables, or anything else that's under that seat. In the 701, the batteries in the back here, just in case I have to maintenance that, that I don't have to crawl through the hellhole to get to it. Uh, also, we got the flap uh, installed, flap lever installed, and it's working. Other things, uh, other things that we got done in here, uh, I had my brake pedals on, on the co-pilot side uh, done so we could use brakes on the right side so we could do transitional training. Uh, so we're slowly but surely um, getting the, the brakes hooked up, the, the cylinders hooked up, the steering arms. Um, on the steering arms, here, here's a little helpful tip. Uh, what I did was I used a, a Jeep twin twin stick shifter boot uh, that I purchased online for I think at the time was $25 and it's a rubber boot that's one boot with the two boots on it and you just cut it in half and you make an adapter just to bolt it up on the firewall and that way they'll help with the carbon, carbon monoxide. I got mine from a Jeep accessory store online there's a bunch of them out there. Uh, Amazon has it, uh, eBay, and there's a whole bunch of Jeep accessories. Uh, you could you could Google it. Uh, I think the model they call it a Dana Dana 300 Dana 300 Twin Stick Shifter Boot. Unfortunately, I don't remember who I bought this off of. I got the idea off the Z Zenith forums. Uh, but if you do Google that, you'll, you'll find out there's a whole bunch of people out there, various prices. Like I said, I got mine for about $25. So that's pretty much what we got done here. Uh, unfortunately here we had to take off the, the, the roll bar or cage and we, we we're gonna sand that and paint that and reinstall that. 
And then uh, the other things we're starting to work on is the instrument panel. Uh, we're gonna keep it pretty simple and clean. Uh, so uh, we're still working on that. We're, debate, we're debating between circuit breakers or regular fuses. Uh, see a lot of people using irregular fuses. Um, so we, we might lean in that direction. Uh, let's take a walk in the back, or I should say, let's go to the back in the hell hole here, and I'll show you the, uh, the flap around controls that we hooked up. The elevator's still not hooked up. Uh, we're still thinking that over. I think we're gonna divorce uh, the elevator, but let's go take a look. Now, on the flapper on bell crank, uh, uh, I did a, a couple things a little different. Uh, I added two split collars to each bell crank, uh, one in the back of the bell crank and one in front of the bell crank. And then I put a, a plastic washer or nylon washer uh, between the bell crank and the split collar. Uh, and the only reason I did that, so, so, it, it it seemed like it wobbled a little bit because it was just on a little three-quarter shaft and I just put the split collar so it didn't have too much tilting to it and to do to allow it to rotate smoothly I purchased a adjustable reamer uh, three-quarter reamer uh, because those 4130 uh, pipes they're they're not always per, pretty round they're a little egg shaped so I got my adjustable reamer, just adjust it, ream it through that bell crank hole, I try it out to see how it moved. And then once it started moving smoothly, I just kissed it with a little ball hone and it's really smooth now. It's probably overkill, but I just, uh, you know, it was my preference. So uh, yeah, that's what I did with the bell crank. So that's where we're at on the fuselage. Boy, that drives me nuts. Drill, Clico, take it apart. Drill, Clico, take it apart. Uh, well, anyway, let's take a look to see what we have back here. So this is the back side of our shop and this is where we plan to do the building. Uh, we're building right on top of the Zenith crate. Uh, that crate is rock solid. So uh, what we did, we, we actually uh, added uh, a couple of square tubing, steel tubing on top of the crate. And then we purchased some MDF three quarter thick sheets, four by eights. We purchased two sheets and laid it on top of the square tubing. And that really made it flat. We put a level on it. We put a, a laser level across the top of it. And it, it is straight and flat. So uh, it's going to be a good work table for uh, putting together this wing. As you see, we, we started getting the material out. And uh, we're, we're getting ready to get started, you know. Drill, Clico, drill, Clico. All over again. So uh, if you have any tips or tricks, uh, comment below. Uh, if you like the video, always give us a thumbs up. S subscribe below to be notified. And we'll see you next time.